Hello everyone, I am Poojita from Talent Battle. Welcome to our new video. In this video, we are going to check some previous year questions from Logical Ability section for TCS NQT exam. As we know, TCS is going to hire 2022 batch students very soon. This video will help you to prepare for that. We hope your preparation is going so well. You can also join our TCS NQT master classes, which will help in your last minute preparation by covering all the sections of TCS NQT like numerical ability, logical ability, verbal ability, programming MCQs and coding questions along with all the previous year questions. You can also join our social media platforms like Telegram group, Instagram page and WhatsApp group. We constantly give updates on placement preparations and off-campus placements. Links for all of this are in the description box. Before we start, do not forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and press the bell icon for instant notifications about our videos. We will start. Now we are going to see a question from the concept of coding and decoding, which is one of the most asked model in many of the slots in previous year NQT exam. So let's see how to solve. In each of the five pairs of the letter clusters, the letters in the second term is rearranged or transformed from the letters in the first term in a particular pattern in which two pairs has the transformation been done in the same way. So if you observe here, there are five pairs. So in this five pairs, the letters in the second term are rearranged from the letters of the first term. For example, if you take the first one, the letters in the second term are rearranged from this first term itself. Okay. Now we need to identify what is the pattern of rearrangement and we should check which among this five is having the same pattern. If you look two and three are having the same pattern or three and four are having the same pattern or one and three is having the same pattern or four and five is having the same pattern, we should identify. Now, one of the best way to solve this question, instead of getting confused like first and two interchange, the third one goes to the loss like this, we can just give simply numbers to the alphabets. So let me just give numbers, one, two, three, four, five, I'll give. Now, A is in the second position that came first. So two came first and then M is in the first position. So one and then N, which is five and then O, which is three and then sorry, O is four and then S, which is three. That means the rearrangement happened like two, one, five, four, three. Now I need to check is any of this is having the rearrangement like that or else I need to go with any more option. Now, if you look at the options, one is paid only with three. So let me check three directly. It is based for me to check two, four and five because one is paid only with three in the option. So I will directly go with three and I will check the rearrangements here. So one, two, three, four, five, I'll give first. Then A is two. So two came first and then F, which is one, two, one, T, which is five and then L, which is four and then U, three. So here the rearrangement is 2, 1, 5, 4, 3. Exactly in the same manner of the first one. See 2, 1, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 4, 3. That means what is my answer? Option C. So once if you view the pattern for the first one, check over the next options and check. If for example, one is paid with 5, check directly 5. Don't waste your time in checking 2, 3 and 4. So look, have a look at the options and then check. So here 1 and 3 satisfied. So I'll go with this option. If they are not, I could have checked with 2 and 3 or 3 and 4 like that. So here it's satisfied. So answer is option C. Easiest way to solve is always by giving numbers to this so that you won't get confused also. So hope you understood. Now we will solve a question from the concept of attention to details. So in this questions, they will give you some criteria and they will give you a case and you need to judge whether the particular case can be approved or the particular case should be referred for a person by seeing the criteria in the question. So let's see how to solve. The following are the criteria of selecting an accountant for a reputed organization. The candidate must be a graduate in commerce with at least 65% in the graduation exam more than 20 years and less than 25 years of age on 1-1-2020. How secure more than 60% in the interview and at least 55% in the written test. 
have at least two years of accounting experience in a company. So this is the criteria for the candidate that you need to select. So if a candidate satisfied all these criteria, you can select him or else they will give you some conditions here. However, if the candidate fulfills all the above criteria except except at B, that means if he fulfills all the above A, C and D, if he fulfills and he did not clear B, then but have an experience of five more than five years as an accountant in a company, his or her case should be referred to a general manager. If he did not clear B, but he cleared A, C and D and he had more than five years of experience as an accountant or accounting in a company, then you can refer the case for the general manager. Next one more they gave at B or at D, but has secured more than 65 percentage in the written test as well as in the interview. That means if he did not uh, clear the criteria of A or D or both of them but still he got 65 percentage in the interview then you need to refer the case to the chairman based on the criteria given above and without assuming any additional information so you're not supposed to assume any information you have to take a decision for the candidate whose profile has been given below mark your answer by choosing the appropriate option you need to choose the appropriate option and they gave you a case here nothing but a profile they will give you depending upon the criteria you should give the decision what you should do for his or her case so let let's see what is the case here anuva passed the graduate examination in commerce with 65 percentage of the marks so graduate examination and there to commerce so that means first criteria satisfied commerce and at least 65 so she got 65 that means first criteria satisfied and is 23 years old on 1119 that means on january 1st 2019 or 19 she was 23 years of age so 23 years of age that means of 2020 she will be 24 years of age so second criteria also satisfied because less than 20 years sorry less than 25 years and she should be more than 20 years that means second condition also satisfied now he secured 65 percent is in the written test and also in the interview so secure 65 percent in in the written test and interview so she needs to get 60 percent in the interview and 55 percent in the written test that means this criteria also satisfied now and having accounting experience of three years in a company so we require minimum two years of accounting experience and she has three years of accounting experience that means criteria d also satisfied now what decision should we take in her case so all the criteria satisfied here that means the candidate would be selected option b if all the criteria are sat, uh, satisfied then the candidate can be selected if any of the criteria like b a or d and A and D is not satisfied, then only we will look into this case. You are not supposed to assume any additional information like C not satisfied, then what to do? So if C not satisfied, it is not selected. That's it. You are not supposed to consider any other information. Whatever is given in the question, that only you are supposed to consider. In this particular case, she cleared all the criteria, so she will be selected. So answer will be option B. We'll see one more example from the concept of attention to details here. Read the following information carefully and answer the given question. The candidate must have completed graduation from any stream with at least 70 percent is be less than 30 years of age on June 1, 2020. Have completed a PZ diploma in creative writing with at least 75 percent is. However, if the candidate fulfills all the above criteria except at two, that means second criteria is not fulfilled, but done post graduation in journalism, his or her case will be referred for the vice president at three, but secure 85 percent is more in graduation, his or her case will be referred to the senior creative manager. Now let us check the case and let us mark the correct option for that. Natasha completed her graduation from commerce with 70 percentage marks so commerce only she did and 70 percentage any stream they said and 70 percentage at least that means criteria one satisfied she completed her post graduation in journalism in 2018 at the age of 29 years in 2018 she is 29 years okay 29 years 
in 2019 only she will cross this 29 years at the end of 2019 definitely she will be in 30 but according to the criteria in the question she should be less than 30 years by 2020 so definitely this criteria will not satisfy she will not be less than 30 she will be at least at 30 or more than 30 she will definitely not be less than 30 So less than thirty means you are not supposed to consider thirty. Also, it should be less than thirty itself. That means this criteria did not satisfy. Second criteria is not satisfied. We'll check the third criteria also. She has also completed her PG diploma in creative writing with seventy five percentage marks. So PG diploma in creative writing with at least seventy five percentage of marks. That means criteria three also satisfied. One and three satisfied, but doesn't satisfy that now what should we do for her case we needs to check this this case whether at uh, two if she did not satisfy but if she do post graduation in journalism then only we can refer for the vice president if she did not do post graduation in journalism she will be rejected but let us check whether she did post graduation in journalism or not see your question the clearly gave post graduation in journalism is done So, if two is not satisfied, but she still did post graduation in journalism, then her case can be referred to the vice president. That means, what is the decision that we can take in her case? Her case will be referred to the vice president. So, what would be the answer? Option B here. So, all the other criteria satisfied. One and three satisfied, but two doesn't satisfied. But we have an option for two, and even she did post graduation in journalism. Then only we refer for the vice president. So answer here will be option B. Now we will solve a question from the concept of data arrangements. Four friends A, B, C, D have four professions: doctor, architect, lawyer, and engineer. Each friend belongs to one of the four different cities: Chandigarh, Indore, Lucknow, and Pune. A is not a lawyer or engineer. The doctor is from Lucknow. D is an architect. the lawyer is from pune the engineer is neither from chandigarh or pune d is not from pune c is from indore which of the following statement is correct about b so we need to identify which of the following statement is correct about b so whenever the questions of data arrangements come most of the students will try to form the arrangements by the given hints they used to identify what is the profession of a b c d and which cities they belongs to so we try to arrange them but there is no necessary see whenever the question of data arrangement comes don't waste your time in arranging everything try to eliminate if you can most of the questions in data arrangement can be solved by using the elimination procedure even without arranging them so now our concentration should be majorly upon b because we need to identify which of the following is correct for b So observe here. B is a lawyer. B is a doctor. B is a doctor. B is a lawyer. That means B should be either a doctor or B should be a lawyer. Yes. Now observe your sentences in the question which speaks about a doctor or a lawyer. The doctor is from Lucknow. The clearly said. Yes. Now if you observe here, the doctor is from Pune. That means this is wrong because he should be from Lucknow. And here also the doctor is from Chandigarh. That means this is also wrong. so two options got eliminated so the option or the profession that is left for b will be a lawyer itself that means doctor is gone so only lawyer now try to eliminate one more option by using the hints given in the question the lawyer is from pune they clearly gave the lawyer is from pune that means option a would be wrong because here the lawyer is from chandigarh so what is the correct one option d that's it even without arranging you can easily eliminate the options So, what is the answer for this question? Option B. Let us check one more question. Let me show you in this question also how do we eliminate each of the five friends P, Q, R, S, and T studies two subjects from the given subjects named history, mathematics, English, Sanskrit, and science. Each subject is studied by two students. That means each student is going to study two subjects. now from which of the given options study science we should concentrate more upon science and who study science now there are five friends p q r s and t p q r s and t now t studies mathematics and sanskrit that means option p will be eliminated why eliminated because 
a student can study only two subjects each subject is studied by two students means a student can study only two subjects so p is already mathematics and sanskrit he is studying so he will not be any more for science so p is eliminated now q studies history and mathematics sorry r studies history and mathematics so r is studying history and mathematics that means r is also eliminated s and t studies both study english that means one more subject is there for them q doesn't study science they clearly gave q doesn't study science we want for science that means q is also eliminated so what is the answer option d that's it even without framing the entire arrangement we can easily eliminate the options so actually s or t both of them are possible either s or t should be possible but according to the option only s is there so what is the answer option d 90% of the questions in data arrangement can be easily solved by eliminating them even without placing the entire thing so maximum try to eliminate the options if you can't then only go for the arrangement so hope you understood now we will solve a question from the concept of blood relations in a certain code if a plus b means a is wife of b a into b means a is son of b a divided by b means a is brother of b then what is the meaning of the expression h divided by k into s plus m so we needs to identify according to this question which is going to be the correct meaning here is m the son of h is correct or k is the brother of m is correct or h is the son of m is correct or h is the brother of m is correct we needs to identify so we will first draw the family cycle by using the expression that they gave so h divided by k what is meaning of h divided by k a divided by b means a is brother of b so h divided by k means h is brother of a so i will represent male in a square format and female in a circle format in a circle format and this i'll use for siblings that is nothing but brothers and sisters and this i'll use for the married couple the symbol and this i'll use for the next generation that means kids this is this i'll use for the next generation people now h divided by k that means h is brother of k so h is a male and he is brother of k you can't place the gender of k by this particular statement itself you needs to go ahead with the following expression so h is a brother of k that means h is a male and he is brother of k now take the first two is done now take second and third k into s k into s means what k is son of s k is son of s so k is also a male and he is son of s so if he is son of s h will also be son of s because h is brother of k so k is son of s that means h will also be son of s that means s kids or h and k you can't place the gender of s let us keep like that only now let's take third and fourth now s plus m s plus m means what s is wife of m if s is wife of m m will be a boy and he will be a male nothing but m will be the husband so m will be the husband now this is the family m and s are couple and their children are h and k now we need to identify which would be going to be correct among the options m is the son of h is m son of h no m is the father of h that means this is wrong k is the brother of m no k is not brother of m k is son of m that means this is also wrong h is son of m is h son of m yes correct h is a fem uh, h is a male and he is son itself so that is correct h is a brother definitely this will be wrong only one option will satisfy the condition so what is the answer for this option c fits in so answer is option c now we will see a question from the concept of data sufficiency data sufficiency is also one good logical topic that you can see in many of the exams so let's see how to solve given below is a question followed by two statements one and two each consisting some information decide which of the following is sufficient to answer the question among six family members o p q r s and t how many are male in the family so they will give you two statements and this is the question they asked you so you need to identify the answer by using this uh, statements for this particular question they gave you two statements here always in data sufficiency first check only statement 1 so what is only statement one saying q is a wife of p q is wife of p means q will be a female and p will be a male because q is a wife so q will be a female and p will be a male 
and the mother of T. Q is a wife of P and the mother of T. That means T gender will not be able to identify. We know only Q is the mother. That means Q will be a female. R is the grandmother of O. R is the grandmother of O and mother of T. That means R will be a female. I know R is a female, but I can't say the gender of O here. So O gender will not be determined. So by using statement one alone, I'll not be able to identify the answer for this question. Why? Because we need to identify how many male are there in the family. That means we should know gender of every person. Then only we can decide how many male are there in the family. So only by using statement one, I did not get the answer. Now you need to check only statement two. Check only statement two. T is the granddaughter of S. T is the granddaughter of S means what? T will be a female and she is the granddaughter of S. S gender again we can't place. Now R is the grandmother of O and T. R is the grandmother of O and T. That means R is a female. And O and T gender, again, o, o gender we can't place, T gender already we know here. Okay, so that's it. By using statement 2 alone, I will get only this one. So again, I will not be able to exactly identify what is the answer for the question. So once if you did not get the answer by using statement 1 alone and statement 2 alone, then all you are supposed to combine. If you get the answer by using any one of them, you are not supposed to combine. Now if I combine both of them, so what do I get? I will get the relations of, I know the gender of T, I know the gender of R, I know the gender of Q, I know the gender of P and here already we know the gender of R and we can even identify gender of S also because here they gave T is the granddaughter of S and R is the grandmother. So S and R will be the husband and wife. So S will be male. Even if I combine both of them and if I identify the family, I can say the gender of S. But even if I combine them also, I will not be able to identify gender of O here. Any of the sentence or any of the hint is not going to give us what is gender of O. So if we don't know at least one person gender, we will not be able to identify the answer for this question. You can't say uh, the O can be a male or a female. No, we will not be exactly able to identify the answer for this question. If O gender is there, then we will be able to decide how many male are there. Now for this question, even both the statements 1 and 2 put together are not sufficient. Even we combine both the statements also, we will not be able to answer exactly. So what would be the option? Option B will be the correct one. We will see few questions on the concept of unboxing a cube or open dice. So before going to solve these questions, let me quickly give you a brief idea how do we solve. So we are going to solve all these questions by using something called as opposite faces of a cube. So basically a cube will be having six faces, six faces and few faces will be adjacent and few faces will be opposite. So now if you take this one, this is actually an open cube. Now, if we fold it, we get an entire cube. Now, we, 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 are, we are going to solve the concept by using something called opposite faces. So, how do we identify the opposite faces is either go first horizontally or go vertically. Okay. So, first let me take this one. Now, if I want to identify opposite face for one, look in a straight line manner itself. Eliminate the next one which is following one and consider the next one. So this both will be the opposite faces. That means one and three will be the opposite faces here. If I want to identify opposite face for two, which is followed by it three, eliminate three. And what is the next one four? That means two and four will be the opposite faces. So next, if you go in this manner, if you want to identify opposite face for five, so eliminate the next one. What is the opposite face? It will be six. Five and six will be the opposite faces here. So one and three are the opposite face, two and four and five and six. Similarly, if you do for this one, either go this way first or this way first. So what will be the opposite face? Five and six would be the opposite face here. Five and six. And similarly, one and three, two and four. One and three, two and four. Two and four. So first, you should know how to identify the opposite face. Once if you know identifying the opposite face, it is very easy to solve the question. So this is one kind of cube opening they will give you, or else they might give you in this format also. If you observe here, there are four faces, four faces, but here there are only three faces. So how do we do this? So either go first like this or first this one. Okay, let me take this one first. So for five, what will be the opposite face? One, because if I leave one, uh, I got this particular thing. So 5 and 1 are the opposite faces here. 
Now for three, I can't find any more because there is no more cube here. Now go in this manner. So for two, what will be the opposite face? Six will be the opposite face. So five and one is one face. Two and three, six is one face. Now what else is left over? They will be the opposite faces. That's it. So what is left over here? One and five is done. Two and six is done. So what is left over? Three and four are left over. So three and four will be the opposite faces. Okay. Now if you try this one, so go like this. Five and two are the opposite faces. One and six will be the opposite face. Five and two will be the opposite. One and six. Now what is left over? Three and four. So three and four will be the opposite faces. Okay. So this is one more kind you can see, or else there is one more also like this. So here only two cubes are there in each. Now how do we solve this one? See, if you want to identify the opposite faces for any cube, look at one first. If you want to identify opposite face for one, which is connected with one and One here, two and three are actually connected with one. One here, that means these are adjacent, so you can't take them. So for one, if you want to identify the opposite face, whichever is connected, leave them. Take the next one, which is four. That means one and four would be the opposite faces. Similarly, if you want to identify for two, here I got one and four. If I want to identify for two, what are connected with two here? One is connected, three is connected, four is connected. What is the next one following up? Five. That means two and five will be the opposite faces. Similarly, if I want to identify for three, three is connected with four, five, and two here, and one is also it is connected here. So what is left over six? That means three and six will be the opposite faces. Similarly, here also, if you want to identify for one, one is connected with two and three. What is the next one coming up? Four. So one and four are the opposite faces. If you want to identify for two, two is connected with four, three and one. What is coming up next? Five. So two and five are the opposite faces. Similarly, what is left over? That will be the opposite face, which is three and six. So that's how we identify the opposite faces. Once if you know opposite faces, then we can easily solve the questions. So let's see one of two models of questions. How do we solve? Here is the first question. Which of the following pattern of the boxes can be formed with when the sheet given below is folded? So this particular sheet, when you fold it, uh, what is the pattern of the cube that is formed? Remember one point. If you uh, can see, you can see only one opposite face. One opposite face only we can see. Okay, so first identify what are the opposite faces here. G and U will be the opposite faces. G and U will be the opposite faces. P and A will be the opposite face. P and A will be the opposite face. So whatever is left over, they will be the opposite face. M and N will be the opposite face. Now, if you can see M in the cube, whichever they gave you here, this is just the three face cubes that you can see. Three faces of the cube only you can see. If you can see N, you can't see M. If you can see M, you can't see N. Only one opposite face you can see. Now we are going to eliminate all the options by using this concept itself. First, take the first opposite faces. U and and g see here u and g both of them are appearing that means this is wrong this cube will not be formed next u is appearing g is not appearing so this is possible here nothing is there u is appearing g is not appearing so this is also possible so first opposite sides are used now let us take the next opposite faces if p appear a is not supposed to be appeared if a appeared p is not supposed to be appeared let us eliminate p is there a is not available Uh, a is there, P is not appearing. But see here, P and A, both of them I can see. That means this arrangement is also wrong. You can see only one opposite face. Similarly, let us check the next one. N and M I need to eliminate. If I see M here, I am not seeing N. But here, both of them I am seeing. That means this is also wrong. So what is the correct one? Only two is correct. So what is the answer? Option C. So you can see only one opposite face. We can eliminate all the options by using this concept itself. So any one of the opposite face should only appear. You can't see both the opposite faces. Let us check one more question. See here. Let us solve this question. Hope you will understand once we solve this. Now the figure marked X is folded to form a box. Now four possible boxes A, B, C, D are given. So the figure which is marked as X is folded. Now we got it. This as the cubes. Okay, so now we need to identify which of this box cannot be the cube that can be formed by using this one. Okay. So let us check. So first, let us give the opposite faces. So what would be the opposite faces here? The plain one and this one will be opposite face. The plain one and this. 
will be one opposite face and this and this will be the opposite face that means this inside square and one more plane one will be an opposite face and next the left over this two would be the opposite face that means a circle and a plane one would be an opposite face now here comes this twist because there are more plane surfaces now for example if i look at the cube one if i see the circle circle is opposite with the plane so i can't eliminate it because it shouldn't come with this particular plane but that can come with this plane boxes yes so i can't eliminate it here like that so here also i can't eliminate because this cannot come with this plane but it can come with any of this two plane surfaces here also i can't eliminate here also i can't eliminate nothing i can eliminate so what should i do but here none uh, all the above is also not there then what should we do observe carefully we can't eliminate anything by using the opposite face here because there are many plane surfaces observe carefully the only thing that i can look here is the adjacent faces now if you observe here this two observe carefully how are they connected a square is there and then this come in this manner yes this particular thing came in this manner now observe here can it be like this or can it be like this so can it be like this is this particular thing that is not going to match with this black one that is going to match with the white surface that means black surface is eliminated here because this both are connected here in a black surface manner that means this is definitely eliminated so b will be wrong b will be wrong so please consider the options as 1 2 3 4 here 1 to 3 4 here that means second one will be definitely wrong so remaining three we can't eliminate any more so definitely second one will be wrong because the particular square here that should meet with the plane surface here as per the figure that should meet with the plane surface if if it was mentioned in this manner then that particular second one should be correct if it was mentioned like this if the dark surface was in this manner then the particular second one would be correct Okay, but here it is not correct so what would be the answer 1 3 and 4 will be correct option a will be correct here now we will see a question from the concept of cuts and unfolds so let's see how to solve the sequence of folding a piece of square paper and the manner in which the folded paper has been cut in the is shown in the figures marked x y and z how would the paper look when unfolded so this is the manner they folded the paper first and then they cut the paper now we needs to identify once if you unfold how it will appear how it will appear so firstly the paper the square paper they took and they folded if you observe this dots here this is how they folded that means they folded exactly to the middle and they took a triangular manner and then again this is already the folded part and then they again folded it so again they folded it then they did the cuts here if you observe here is one uh, semi circle cut and here is one circle cut and here like this they cut now once if they open it how it will appear is what we needs to identify so basically how do we solve this questions is we can go with the concept of uh, mirror images water images all of those or we can actually even eliminate all of this uh, options which we had see what is the figure that they cut here this is the particular figure so consider this as your reference part everywhere so just draw like this in each and every diagram which is mentioned here just consider that as your reference part nothing but okay just consider this as your reference part now observe which is exactly similar to the given one okay so is the first one similar to the given one yes there is a circle there is a cut here there is a uh, semi circle here also so there is a circle this cut isn't there here yes that means this is eliminated see similarly this cut is not there that means this is also eliminated so here this both can be taken okay so this both can be taken now now how do i eliminate in this both is once if you open this once if you open this whatever you got here exactly here the both should be symmetrical the both should be symmetrical or you can say they are like a mirror images so whatever is there exactly here also it should be in a same manner that means this circle should come here and here this cut should be there here this one should be here also so if you observe this is exactly like a symmetrical one but what about this one this cut is not appearing here that means this is wrong so what is the answer option b that's it so answer will be option b
so most of the cases we can actually eliminate it even without uh, going with the concept entirely like the mirror or water images most of the cases try to eliminate them now here is a question from the concept of visual reasoning or we can say it as non verbal reasoning also so let's see how to solve this questions find the figure that will replace the question mark in the following figure series so they gave us some figure series and we should identify what is the figure that can replace this particular question mark so don't observe all the five figures which are there here try to concentrate only upon one figure if you look the first one here came to the middle position in the next case so whatever is the first one here again that is coming to the middle position so the first one here came to the center the first one here should come to the center that means in the center this particular figure should come yes in the center this particular figure should come so let us try to eliminate the options this is eliminated this is eliminated because this particular figure should come in the center so whatever is the first one that comes to the center first one comes to the center first one comes to the center okay so this is eliminated now i need to eliminate in this two so i should either concentrate on this or this one because here they are different so let us try to concentrate if you observe here the star is here yes and the star moved exactly to the down if you observe and here this figure exactly to the down again to the next one so your circle circle moved down that means here this is there this should come down here yes this should come down here that means this one should be here so which is correct this is correct option c so don't try to concentrate all the figures that you had you will definitely get confused by seeing all the five figures which is mentioned so concentrate only on one or two figures if you can eliminate by using one figure we can eliminate if we can't eliminate by using one figure we will go ahead with the next one so first i concentrated on the middle one and then i concentrated on this particular figure so as per that i can eliminate all the options so what is the correct answer for this option c now we will solve a question from the concept of venn diagrams so let's see how to solve the following diagram shows the people who can speak various languages the rectangle stands for spanish the circle stands for indian the triangle stands for russian the square stands for american the number in different segment shows the number of persons answer the question on the basis of the information given in the diagram so they gave us a diagram we should answer this question depending upon the information that they gave here so number of persons who can speak american and russian language so we should identify how many persons can speak american and russian language so how do we basically solve venn diagrams is so here they ask you for american which diagram is going to represent american it is going to represent by using square so american it should be a square and russian is represented by what russian is represented by a triangle here the triangle is going to represent the russian now you need to check the point where the triangle and the square meet because we want the person who will speak american and russian so this is the square and this is the triangle so where they are going to meet at this point the met yes which is eight exactly at this point only the bed that means there will be eight persons who can speak american and russian language so what will be the answer for this question eight which is option b perfect but if they ask you how many people can speak only american and russian what will be the answer if they ask you how many people can speak only american and russian what is meaning of this particular word only means the square and the triangle should only meet remaining shouldn't come into picture if you observe here the particular eight which we take actually this rectangle is also there yes but here in the question they did not ask us clearly only so we can take uh, any other mixed also but if they clearly specify you only then you should look over only where the square and the triangle meet in this particular figure they are not going to meet anywhere so if they clearly gave you this only then your answer will become zero there are no persons who are going to meet only american and russian but here they did not specify you only so if they are going to meet with any other language also we can consider them so what will be the answer for this question it is option b 8 now we will see a question from the concept of statements and course of actions so let's see how to solve 
a statement is followed by three course of actions one two and three assuming everything in the statement to be true decide which of the suggested course of action a decision to be taken for follow up improvement in the regarding of the problem logically follows the pursuing so they gave you some statements so whenever this statements happen what is the course of action that you can take so you needs to identify logically and you should you should take a decision here so if this happens this is what the course of action that we can take to improve them or to solve the problem you needs to take the decision so let us first understand what is the statement here in one of the varish road accident 15 people died when a road based bus carrying them clashed on to the running truck so there is an accident and depending upon the accident 15 people died so this is what happened now you needs to take a course of action and they gave you three statements here depending upon this accident you should take a course of action so let us look over the statements what they gave so first course of action the bus driver should be immediately suspended without any queries so can you take this decision no we can't take this decision because the bus driver cannot be suspended without any queries you needs to question him first because there are many ways the accident that might happen not only because of the driver so this course of action will not be logically followed up this is not logically correct we needs to question him and then we can suspend so the first one is not going to happen let us check the second one the government should make marking to all the accident prone areas yes this should be definitely done so once if the accident occurred there that means it's like a dangerous spot or we the government should definitely give some uh, symbols or some notations there so that this is an accident area so this can be considered as a course of action after this accident we can consider this as a course of action now let us check the one more statement the department of roadway should hold an inquiry at the entry level and try to punish those who are responsible for negligence in the court yes this can also be considered as a court of action uh, as a course of action here because the clearly gave you needs to do the inquiry at the entry level and we needs to punish who are uh, for this in the court itself so this can also be taken that means the course of action once if this incident happen we can take according to the statements which ever they gave here is two and three will be considered that means option c option c but definitely not one it can be like the driver should be uh, suspended the driver should be suspended with queries if you ask him any questions and then if you feel you can suspend him but without queries we can't suspend him so what is the answer for this option c so basically course of actions uh is always the way you think so if this statement happen what are the courses or what are the decision that is that you are going to take so answer will be option c here okay now let's see a question from the topic of syllogisms so basically syllogisms is a topic which uses venn diagrams to solve the questions so we have two statements over here and there are three conclusions so there are some conclusions which may follow the statements right so let us have the venn diagrams to be implemented to answer the question now venn diagrams are nothing but circles which represent the terms in the statements for example let us take the very first statement all balls are cylinders that means what for example if i take a circle which represents balls right let me just consider these balls are horizontal all the balls are horizontal so now what i can say actually there are two ways of representing this question first is if you observe if if i take this circle as balls there can be a circle which can be taken outside of balls and can be considered as cylinders why because all the balls must be cylinders right everybody all the balls must be cylinders so balls inside cylinders right so that is one representation the or the other representation i can take look is a minimum i can say now what can be the maximum the maximum can be whatever the balls are that will be cylinders right that means the entire circle of balls is considered as the entire circle of cylinders so all balls are cylinders so both are possible right now if you go with the second statement what is the second statement no cylinder is a drum look no cylinder is a drum means where should i take the circle should it there be any connection between the cylinder and the drum definitely not so here we should have a different circle where there is not even a point of connection between a cylinder and a drum now can i take a drum inside cylinder 
again no why because cylinder has nothing to do with the drum because no cylinders are drums that means a different circle must and should so here also the same so no cylinders are drums so this is the representation of two possibilities we have possibility one and possibility two for the statements so when diagrams or syllogisms always have possibilities so possibility one two and so on whatever they are possible right now we have to check which of the conclusion follows the statements so conclusion one no drum is a cylinder now the point is whenever you have a conclusion the conclusion must then should follow all the possibilities must follow all the possibilities whatever you have so it should follow all the possibilities right everybody so possibility one possibility two and possibility three and so on so here we have two possibilities this conclusion one must follow both the possibilities that is possibility one and possibility two. so let us check the possibility one no drum is a cylinder so no drum is a cylinder there is no point of contact or intersection between a drum and a cylinder so the possibility one follows right now let us check the possibility two possibility two is what again no dr no drum should be a cylinder no drum is a cylinder so again possibility two also follows so conclusion one definitely follows right everybody now let us check the second one some cylinders are balls now some cylinders are balls for example here comes the horizontal and the vertical part let me take all the balls are horizontal as i said and let us consider the cylinders as a vertical lines right so if you observe over here if i go with balls all balls are cylinders i can say but if you go for cylinders here the cylinders are nothing but some of the vertical lines are horizontal lines yes or no everybody can i say that or not look not all not all all is not possible but definitely some of the here this part some of the vertical lines are of horizontal lines so that definitely says some cylinders are balls is definitely must and should be okay with the possibility one now in the possibility two if all balls are cylinders then definitely some balls will be cylinders is also possible everybody is that a yes or no when i say all balls are cylinders definitely some balls are also cylinders right so that says possibility two also it follows now going with the possibility three no ball is a drum no ball is a drum possibility one it's fine and no ball is a drum and possibility three also it's fine so that says for conclusion two also follows conclusion three also follows right everybody and that proves all the conclusions are possible so my option is exactly option c must be the answer right everybody now for example i'm just giving an example right let us say conclusion four is also given what is the conclusion all cylinders are balls all cylinders are balls now everybody tell me does this conclusion four follows with both the possibilities do comment in the comment box before i answer the question now i hope you did if not try to comment it right now so that you can check whether your answer is correct or not now checking with this all cylinders are balls with both the possibilities possibility one and possibility two look at possibility two it is possible all cylinders are balls whatever the cylinders are those are balls so possibility two it's fine but if you consider the possibility one all cylinders are balls now tell me are all the vertical lines are horizontal lines no only some only some part of vertical lines is horizontal lines but not all so that clearly says possibility one is not possible right everybody so that says conclusion four as if given if given it is not follows right everybody i hope you understood it very clear right thank you for watching the video till the end if you like the video do not forget to press the like button and also join our social media platforms like telegram group instagram page and whatsapp group link for all of this or in the description box thank you